There was a Chinese invasion to the Indian territory, the Northern Kashmir area. But the, the important point is, this operation is, Chinese salary guard, it's a domestic operation, not the operation over the border. Because the Sino-Indian Sino border on Northern Kashmir is not well settled. Both sides claim different borders. Therefore, there is a, a kind of agreed border line, possible border line between these two, Indians claim and the Chinese claim, and this is just the agreed line. But what China did, and what China said is, they behaved <coughs> within the area of their own asserted border. Are, therefore, this is a very domestic behavior, domestic maneuver of the military. <coughs> therefore, it shouldn't be condemned. But no other country can say such a thing to others, or no other country can say such a thing to the international society, that we did something awfully wrong to our neighbors, but no, that's their misunderstanding. We think it's fine. This kind of claim is quite interesting. Um, uh, what more interesting is, uh, initial in image to me is, is this the military's anti shis initiative, or if there is any division or difficult relations between the PLA and Xi Jinping himself. But the commander of that military district was not demoted, was not replaced, stayed that position. In other words, that could be accepted by Xi Jinping himself. All these are just, you know, uh, guesses and uh, imaginations uh, for our side. But, uh, it still stays an interesting situation and difficult something inside of China, inside between China and the Indian side. So that is something that I think we'd better keep it in our mind, how to live together with China and what is a good way to shake hands with the Indian side. So the question is still at large and difficult to find good answers, difficult to find good suggestions. Get it? Until a few years ago, it, to us, the Indi Indian Ocean, to the U.S. Navy mainly, the Indian Ocean was a way of getting from the West Coast to the Persian Gulf. That was its primary strategic significance. Uh, that, all of that has changed in the past few years with China's rise and increased Chinese interest vis-a-vis -vis India and increased Chinese presence in the Indian Ocean, naval presence. Um, it's uh, it's uh, changed with India's rise and India's recognition that um, uh, the Indian Ocean for the first time um, with Chinese presence there has, has become um, uh, strategically important to them. Um, and for the first time, India has started to take an interest in East Asia and the Western Pacific. So the Indo-Pacific concept for the Indians, for the Australians, <coughs> for the Japanese and the Americans is a way of linking the Western Pacific strategically with the Indian Ocean. Um, and uh, the practical result of that has been increased U.S.-India bilateral cooperation, um, not just in terms of our consultations and our navies and air forces operating together, but in terms of technology cooperation um, as well. Um, and it also means stronger bilateral India-Australia, India-Japan cooperation. And we brought all this we brought all this together trilaterally in the Malabar annual Malabar exercise that we conduct with India and Japan. It's a naval exercise done one year in the Bay of Bengal and one year in the, um, off the coast of Japan. Um, and we also brought it together at the uh, East Asia Summit when we conducted a quadrilateral meeting among the U.S., Japan, Australia, and India. So this kind of cooperation is going to become more prevalent, I think. And, and the Indo-Pacific is a way of, concept is a way of thinking about all that. Open it up. So uh, please, uh, we don't have a, a traveling mic here, so just speak up and, uh, and we can repeat the question from here. Please, yes sir, right there. Anyway. Yes, sir. My name is Vijay Bajra again. I'm from uh, Publication for India. A quick comment on what Mr. Shin has mentioned. As a matter of fact, intrusion in Indian territory had been happening most of the time when Chinese head of state was in India. 
prior to Xi Jinping, Kei Qiang was there, and at the time also they had negotiated. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a little bit of maybe a fact behind what you alluded to, that PLA and the Chinese administration, Xi Jinping particularly, at this time may not be seeing eye to eye. And that became very evident when before the last meeting of the Congress, I don't remember the number, uh, there was a major conflict between India and China and Doklan, which is off the Bhutan border. <coughs> and Xi Jinping would never do or sanction any such thing just before the Congress meeting where he has to be elected for the next term. And of course, subsequently, the chief of the LA army, he was uh, cashiered and there was a new gentleman appointed. Press didn't pick it up in detail, but this is what happened. So, in a way, it could be right for that. But my question to you is, the Quad talks have been happening for the last 10 years, and of course, uh, Prime Minister Abbey has started that. And at that time, uh, Australia, <coughs> previous administration of Australia, pulled out of those exercises temporarily, Malabar exercises, particularly because they wanted to have closer relationship with China and they did not uh, want to be seen as working with this alliance. But now they are trying to come back. The question is, is there any chance of retrieving the quote-unquote last lost ground in the South China Sea with this part coming into being? South China Sea issue is a bit difficult for me to understand um, because um, China did, doesn't have any island-based commitments. Taiwan does, um, Malaysia does, Vietnam does. In other words, all countries committing to the South China Sea uh, uh, territorial issues have some Iran basis commitments except China. And that was surely be the motivation for China to make a land field and set up the military base over there. But the interesting thing is the Chinese strategic uh, characteristics is the flexibility. <coughs> and once they start making an artificial island there, that became the matter of the face of the Chinese military. In other words, <coughs> that is going to deprive its flexibility from its maneuver. So, what I'm interested in is why China did and for, for, for what purposes. Um, of course, there is uh, past experiences of declaration of uh, Addis, air, air Defense Identification Zone over East China Sea. Um, it was a bit peculiar because American standard and Japanese standard basically similar. Addis, ADIZ, Air Defense Identification Zone, is just a zone inviting your attention that major aircraft coming to our direction, to our side, and coming into, the, into that zone you will be warned or something like that. But what China announced is that even civil aircrafts coming into that area should clarify where they are heading. If not, there could be the jeopardy of shutdown, which is very similar to the announcement of the territorial air, I mean the sovereign air. Was you announce this is the sovereign air. The water under it is going to their sovereign water. And the all islands is their sovereign territory. So this is a very natural logic of sovereignty from air to the surface. So that's why I was very much interested in what China is going to do next in East China Sea. So when I found they started the land reclamation, what I felt is they are going to s declare the, their own style of air identification zone 
then move to the declaration of the territorial border, blah, 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 blah. And that is what they are going to do based on that island. Therefore, <coughs> what I expected is going to build a runway, deploy aircraft, air control radar, surface to air missiles. These are necessary sets to control the air. But what they did is to deploy self propelled artillery. That is, they are very much anxious about possible invasion somebody from ocean to the island. And this, actually, um, the, um, drove me very, say, difficult to understand what China is thinking based on that iron nuclear mission. They are very much anxious about the possible invasion, sure be by the United States, but they are very much anxious about it. But if, do you think if there is any chance that the United States Marine Corps or Navy is going to attack the islands by risking of devastating bilateral relations with China and the United States? I don't think there is any possibility. But this is a kind of say alarming factor for the Chinese military. They always think something dangerous is very near to them. Or in other words, they are threatened by somebody. And this, say, opposition is not healthy and may not contribute to improve variety of relations for China with the other. That is my anxiety. Do you think that the Quad, uh, or what, what, is, what is the response to that then? Is, is Quad, can they do something? Yeah. Uh, therefore, the, this anxiety is gradually <coughs> shared by other countries. India shared, and Australia is gradually sharing. Therefore, there will be, a, in the near future, there will be a court cooperation. At least first at the diplomatic talks, then move to the sec more serious security talks. That's my understanding of the current situation. And South China Sea? You've served here twice. <laughs> the South China Sea has a, a number of dimensions. One dimension is what the Chinese are doing on the seven features they control in the Spratly Islands. And what they're doing is re reclaiming land and or dredging New, making new land and filling it up with military facilities. Um, the other dimension is uh, less um, recognized, and that is um, the U.S. and China in particular have used 